On the air, episode 115, Slate. Welcome to the Tommy Show. That's right. Great to have you on today. Give it up. Give it up for the Sully Band. You can't see that. Give it up for the live audience. Give it up for the live audience. Wait. Wait. Give it up for the Aztecs. Yes. Come on! Can you believe it? Yes. I talked to Ted Leitner this week, and I said, man, I'm so happy for you. For the first time in your career, you get to call a Final Four, not under Steve Fisher, yeah. but under the current uh, administration at San Diego State. But it's such a, it's been another big hand for the Aztecs. I can't yeah. even tell you. It's so good. Yeah. And the Padres. Give it up for the Padres. Come on. Yeah. And the San Diego Char... No. Uh, yeah. Can I just say they're dead to me? Like, they're dead to me. Um, I know it's hard being a Cubs fan, but you and I grew up in this town. It's hard being a San Diego fan. I think the only thing we could count on was Julie V and the Soccers at one point. No, seriously. Good old number 22. And they were like, they were undefeated the entire time. Uh, so welcome, audience. Welcome, Sully Band. And we got a huge show today. Tony, oh, yeah. let's take it away, buddy. All right. Let's do it. Ladies and gentlemen, he's an author. He's a restaurateur. He's a 15-time Emmy Award winner. Ladies and gentlemen, Sam the Cookie Guy. Come on. Two. Come on, we got you. Sam the Cooking Guy is here. Yes, he is. I mean, seriously, we've had this idea to do this show for three years now, and um, you You've asked me every time. every week since. Yeah. The, no, not quite. Dude, there's invitations and then there's begging. It's begging. <laughs> it wasn't begging. But I, but, uh, the, but the text that I sent you recently, I said, hey, you wouldn't want to do our show, would you? And you said yes, and it was like yes. Uh, so thank you. Know you know what? You're nice guys. I like it. And how do I keep saying no to you? Exactly. Oh, come on. Thank you. Hey, it's so great to have you. Thank One you. thing I, you know, we all know you. We're familiar with your kitchen. I like that. We're familiar with your food. Go ahead. When did the whole thing start? And when? How did it get on TV? Because you were obviously a chef. Uh, no, I was never a chef. Um, to make it really brief, I had an idea about starting a travel show. Okay. I was in biotech. I was miserable. I'd gone to Tokyo with my brother-in-law. I wanted to go back to Tokyo. I tried to figure out I could be a pilot, but I'm not smart enough. I'm not good with math. A flight attendant, I don't want to have to be nice to people for 14 hours at a time. I know. And by the way, the flight, I gotcha. the flight attendants get treated like complete crap by the people on the plane. I didn't want Man. that. So I thought- Hey, that, stewardess, I, I, service. Yes, yes, right? It's exactly that. So I, anyway, make a long story short, I came up with an idea about a travel show. Sam the Traveling Guy. Sam the Traveling Guy. There wasn't a name. Uh, I quit my biotech job to try and pull it off. And a month before, I was supposed to go Tokyo and Hong Kong to shoot some demo footage. 9-11 no. happened. I had no job. I had no job to go to. Uh, and I sat at home, and I didn't know what to do. So you started cooking tater tots. I watched, <laughs> I watched a, a cooking segment on KUSI wow. that I told Mike McKinnon this. It was the worst Pork. cooking I was gonna, segment I was gonna I've say, ever I was going to say, it was a horrible cooking life. segment, was it? And as I was sitting there that day with no job in, the, in a week or so following 9-11, I'm watching this terrible moment on television. Awesome. And I think to myself, holy Oh, can I say that? No, you did. Go ahead and say it's all right. Hey, Sam. Holy, holy Somebody should do that better. And the light bulb went off, and I went, wait a minute. I can do it better. My wife comes home from work, and I go, I know what I'm going to do. It's not travel. It's going to be cooking. And I laid it out, and she goes, it's a great idea. Just one thing. I go, what? She goes, honey, you can't cook. <laughs> I was going to say. But like right the, after you revived her from the laughter. Here's the smart part. I will make stuff that's easy. Yeah. So instead of, like, just this guy was making butternut squash soup, which is really simple, really complicated. And he was talking like a chef. 
But wait, hold on a second. Said somebody why? should do that easy. That the people sitting at home will look and go, that looks good and simple, and I bet I can make it. Yeah, I, like what, it. I like what you made, because butternut, yeah, butternut squash soup, what is this, Russia? I don't, there's no need to make any soup or it's salad. delicious. Ever. There is reason to make soup. You know what? Hey, listen, all I know is the last time, the last thing I ate that you made yeah. was at the Taste of San Diego. Yeah. At the, uh, the they, they, had a, they had a food festival, and your taco stand was up. And I had a good. Oh, the taco the next day. Yeah. We 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 won the the big event the day before. I know you did. With a with an Italian beef sandwich, and we did not win with our Korean short rib taco. That is a sin that we didn't win. I know a why. Sin. Because you ran out of food. Because I had like eight of them. Well. Yeah. <laughs> so the, okay, the, thank the, you. The judges thank never you, got it. Wait a minute. You just opened a brand new restaurant. Can you? Yeah. Name all your restaurants. Yeah. So like a so not not tacos in the it. little Eddie food hall. Samburgers in the little Italy food hall. We just opened Cuckoo's Nest, which is fried chicken concept. I love it. Fried chicken sandwiches. We have a Korean fried chicken sandwich that will blow you away, it's so delicious. And then across the piazza, we have Gray's, which is you know, sofas and you sit down and nice and So what's interesting, fancy, I think uh -huh. that, but you have to remember, you were not a chef. No. You just, hey, that seems like it's gonna taste the, good. Sam, I'll cook this. Sam the cooking guy, intentionally, yeah. because uh, then to me a chef was either trained in restaurants or in culinary school, and none of that I had. I was just a guy that cooked. A regular I just dude. wanted to encourage people to cook. What was the pitch like going to your first station and saying, I got an idea. We're gonna uh, shoot this in front of my orange formica in my in my kitchen. <laughs> Sully, I made a I made a demo, it's a 90 seconds. I sent it out. The people I sent it to initially were like, this is horrible. You can't do this. You can't do this. It's not going to work. And finally, I said, screw it. I sent it to a couple stations. Yeah. And a guy named Alberto Pando, that Channel 6 used to be Fox, mm -hmm. called me up and he goes, I'd like to talk to you about this. Yeah, I, uh, I talked to him and I started a couple months later. He didn't offer me any money. I didn't ask for any money because I knew I needed them yeah, right. more than I needed. It was a them. distribution deal for you. Uh, right? Well, a distribution implies I mean, you got dollars. On, but you got no, on. I needed to learn how to right. be on television. But here's the thing. Yeah. You create, if you look at camera angles now on Food Network, you yeah. created a whole different deal with what you had. Because you said, okay, the people have to see it. I'm, I have this. I'm going to make the people see it. I, thought, yeah. I think it's fantastic. Yeah, thanks. I, I like your, your kind words. Uh, we think we have a very enjoyable, very fun, very watchable show. Yeah. We're not, not everybody's going to like it. My grandmother would say that's why they make different flavors of ice cream. But it's fun. And I think that we make, you watch and you should be going, oh, God, awesome. that looks delicious. <laughs> I know, like, Thank sweet you. mother <laughs> That's like, the tacos that. are great. The dude makes great looking <laughs> But I also think it's something that I can make, you know? Hey, uh, you want to be able to make the food you see. Dude, this is great about Cam. He still listens to, uh, to uh, KPRI, clearly. Um, <laughs> right on. Can I, can, do you ever get boozy, like, with a little, you know, a little swoozy? Listen, once, uh, for some reason, it was a, a cocktail-centric show when it was a TV show. Right. By the end of it, I was hammered. I can't do that. It was a shooter. I can't. I need to be good. Right. I, I, I need to be... I mean, look, I don't look like I'm the smartest guy on the planet. I don't look focused. Yeah, but look at us. But I am <laughs> relatively. So we're lowering the bar. Yeah, you, you look are. like a genius. Uh, absolutely, yes. You know what I learned I from you? Yeah. You said when you make a hamburger or a hot dog, toast the bun first. Yes. It amazes me how Wait, it first? seems such a little thing. Wow. Yeah. But people are making hot dogs and burgers and stuff like that. And then putting it in a cold effing bun? Don't do that. <laughs> toast the thing. By the, the way, thing. the new name of the band for Belly Up? Yeah. Cold effing bun, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Wait, wait. One last question. Before we get to our next guest, what was the very first yeah. thing you cooked on television? Uh, it was a salmon dish mm -hmm. that my wife used to make that I did. Totally ripped it off. And I said, did. Well, that was my demo. Slate. Wait, wait, that was my demo. Sorry, the first time I was actually on real television, no. it was a barbecue chicken pizza. Uh, I kind of ripped off California Pizza Kitchen, just in, in what it was. Barbecue sauce, deli roasted chicken. No. It was really easy. Awesome really stuff. easy. Sam the Cookie, right. I'm so happy to have you. Come on. Our next guest. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, he's one of the most beloved San Diego Padres ever. Coming up to bat from Paducah, Kentucky, good old number 12, Steve Finley. Yes, Wasn't Steve Finley Steve, the coolest cat on the yes. block when he was playing for the Padres? Your old there. school Padres jacket over here. Wow. Steve. I know. 
Keenan. What's up, oh, buddy? Got my spot. It's great to see you. Good to see you. I get to see you more than most because our executive producer, Big Biz Show, is a good friend of yours, Greg Totter. Yep. From, from Kogo Radio and iHeartMedia. But it's great to see you. And I, I, you were never the celebrity type. You always shied away from it. And I bet you're like under, we don't even see you anymore. What are you doing? Oh, you know, well, I was working with the Padres up until this last year, and, and I've kind of stepped back from that now. I've uh, been at uh, Morgan Stanley for eight years, uh, helping athletes with financial education, keeping myself busy, yeah. and uh, uh, got twin uh, eight-and-a-half-year-olds, so I'm, I am <laughs> dad and yeah, coach. No, yeah. I'll tell you doing what stuff I wasn't able to do when he's I played. He's not coming down to Little Italy to eat at any of our restaurants. Yeah, so that's right. what he's not we doing. We're going to fix that. Well, he doesn't we have any time. About, we're going to fix yes, that. Yes, he doesn't have yes. any time. Well, i got to say something about Steve Finley. Yeah. You know the thing we do during the holidays, breaking yes, and entering breaking Christmas? Dinner. I think it was 98, 1998, I get a phone call from Steve Finley and Wally Joyner, and they said, hey, Tommy, that Christmas thing you do, or about to do, what do you do with all those faxes you're not taking care of? He goes, will you give us some? And I gave a bunch of uh, faxes to Steve Finley and Wally Joyner, and they took care of many families just themselves. Yeah. Awesome stuff. Yeah. Well, he, he called it Secret Santa, and yeah. he's like, I want to tell about it, tell people. I was like, it's Secret Santa for a reason. <laughs> <laughs> Let's keep it secret. But he's yeah, been doing for it for years. 20, year, 20 years, and yeah. then uh, when COVID came around, yeah. it kind of like put a squash on, on getting into people's houses unbeknownst to them, so we figured we better not <laughs> And do it, here's another cool little story. I think it's a cool story. I had this girlfriend a few years ago. Her name was Michelle, and she would always go to Del Mar to go lay out at the beach, and I'd, I'd say, hey, where are you? And she goes, I'm laying out at the beach. I forget what street. And she goes, I go, I'm going to call it 20th. 25th. Yeah. And, and I go, what are you, what are you uh, doing there? She goes, well, I'm hoping Steve Finley walks by. Yeah. <laughs> That's kind of a good deal. <laughs> uh, let's go. We're going to go back into your career later. Let's talk about the Padres right now because it's pretty amazing that we have what we have coming into here, an opening day uh, that we had this week and, and, a, and an unbelievable season that we had last year. What do you, are we drinking the Kool-Aid or is this going to happen? No, this this team is set up. I remember walking in the clubhouse in 98, and you looked around and was like, wow, we got the mix here. Yeah. Let's just got to go out and play and do our thing. Everybody do their job. And I right. think this team has the mix. They got the starting pitching. Yeah. They have the bullpen. Uh, they got, Obviously, they have the talent on the everyday players, on, on the position players on the field. I mean, it's, it's not just talent. It's superstars. Right. Uh, and so they have the ingredients. They got to stay healthy. Uh, that's the biggest thing. That's what we did in 98. We stayed healthy. Uh, they have enough depth. Uh, I don't know how their pitching is in the minors, but I think they have enough depth. And this is going to be an exciting team. I mean, look, they can beat you so many different yeah. ways. They can throw a shutout or they can pound you to death uh, on the offensive side. And I think there's going to be a lot in the middle that's going to account for more wins. Is, is Fernando Tatis Jr. a question mark? Or is, are, is, is he the guy that we thought he is? He was basically the face of baseball before all this came down here. You know, I, he's got a lot to prove. Uh, obviously, after after what happened, and you know, I think in the beginning of camp, you know, he didn't play for a full year, and you saw a lot of the struggles come out. But then all of a sudden, here at the end of camp, you saw him picking up and picking up, and I'm sure he's going to continue to get bats yeah. at bats over in Arizona, and and hopefully, whenever he gets back, uh, uh, you know, he's got a firecracker lit underneath him to get back in there and prove to people uh, what he can do. What was the magic with '98? Because I grew up here in San Diego, I remember the '84 Padres, the '98 Padres, and you. What was so cool about that year? Because, you know, 2023 Padres, they haven't done anything yet, but you guys did. It was our clubhouse. I mean, that, that, that's really where the magic happens. It's, uh, you know, you can't have 25 individuals doing their own thing and not worrying about it. it we were 25 individuals that had one goal in mind, and that was right. to win a World Series. And we're going to do whatever it took to get there. And I think that's the collective magic that has to happen for this clubhouse uh, is that right there. Because and, and, they have the talent. I mean, bar none. If they can pull together and pick each other up, and which I'm sure they will. But I think that's the magic ingredient. Can you believe we have Steve Finley in studio? <laughs> Come on! And Sam took it down. That's awesome. The two guys we've been begging to come on for at least a yeah. week. And we got another guy. All right, let's go. Ladies and gentlemen, approaching robe status. Oh, yeah. Mr. Wonderbus. Yeah, Mr. Yeah. Wonderfront. Mr. San Diego Ernie Hahn.
Look at that. Look at the icon sitting this is San Diego right I got there. A, I've been on a couple of times. I got a serious upgrade with these two. Are you no, kidding totally, me? Yeah. My goodness. I mean, this is normally I like shotgun Tom and Jesse. For I mean, <laughs> you guys are always awesome, but like, love this guy. I've been watching his program yeah. forever. Watched this guy as a kid, you know, and, and all the amazing center field and all the home runs. Just awesome. Can I just say, because you and I are very close friends, Ernie's a Padre freak. Oh, yeah. Ernie starts planning opening day like three opening days ago. I've got more text messages in the last 24 hours about stuff coming up. Well, I brought you into the tickets this year. Yeah. So we got these great tickets, yes, thanks I, to Trev, yeah. a couple of years ago that I, I feel so honored Did to have right Trev? behind home play. Yeah. Did you say Trev, man? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. These guys are creating a black hole out here in the waiting room between uh, Wonder Bus and food know, and what right? they're going to do, create. <laughs> so it, exactly it was right. swirling. So I mean, it, it, obviously, we're all excited about the Padres and what the team's doing. And um, yeah, to think, I mean, I just we, we, Steve and I were just talking about all the years of just tracking down those balls in center field and the home runs and just um, it's it's part it's a fabric it's part of the community which we love here. In is Santa your Santa job Santa. really to you know load up people on a good time because you really are have a have the best job? Around. I think um, I think I'm tough to beat at it. I got like I, I just love bringing people together and doing cool things that celebrate San Diego. What just, bar were you at when you said I know? Let's get a double decker bus <laughs> and start driving around and throwing a band on top. How did that all start? I had, I had the idea prior to Wonderfront in, in 19. Uh, we got so busy on that I couldn't get to it. And so uh, during the pandemic, and Sam and I were talking a little about this earlier, it just um, had this idea and, and this vision and then no. um, started building it. And and now we maybe, you know, maybe we'll cook on it. Maybe we it's do, a wonderful we'll experience. It's, this, it's the most fear I've ever experienced in my entire life when I play now. <laughs> <laughs> no, dude, what? Like, oh. When you're on top of the Wonder Bus, yeah. you're moving. It's yes. not still. No, we're going. Oh, I realize that. And if you go through Encinitas, yeah. there's Tory Pines all over, which <laughs> I think is a felony if you cut them down. So it's like, hey, everybody. Uh. <laughs> yeah, it was. Uh, you should have a spotter for some of those low trees yeah. that come through. And um, It is a fantastic idea, though, because. Um, tree. I mean, look, look at the space yeah. you have on the side of this. It's KUSI or has Sully yeah. Entertainment Group or whatever. And then you got a band there, and you just kind of roll up. Unplanned many occasions, right? We just show up. It's been great on that. You know, we, we started thinking about all these experiences where there's music involved mm -hmm. and there's stages, and then you got stage hands and expenses, and we literally can roll anywhere, anytime, and then we're done, we roll out of there. So whether it's the St. Patrick's Day Parade or promoting different brands and, and unique experiences yeah. or just people renting it out for a 60th or a 50th birthday party, whatever it can be. And you and I have talked Thanks about Thanks for this, that, right? for saying 60th. <laughs> well, I was meant 50th for you. Just me. <laughs> okay. um, well, after the break, I have questions for all three of you guys. And I got a cool baseball question for you that we're going to ask Wait. right after. Can you game. believe we have Steve Finley, Ernie Hahn, and Sam the Cooking Guy on the air? It's on the air. I mean, you, this is so cool. I mean, truthfully, you didn't have a show put together last Saturday. And in three days, <laughs> look who you have on the set. Pretty I nice mean, stuff. thank you to Sam the Cooking Guy for being here. Thank you to Ernie Hahn and Steve Finley. Yeah, I good mean, stuff. Thanks, guys. Yeah. This is so cool. But I do have a question for everyone. Well, I want to start with uh, Steve Finley. We've had a lot of baseball legends sitting right there, and they always tell a, a cool story. And I'm going to ask you to tell a cool story. But when they tell the story, they always know the pitch count. They always know, okay, it was, you know, <laughs> on a Tuesday and it was like two balls, two strikes. And I was like, how does that, how does that happen? Why is that? You know what? I don't know. I feel like if somebody can bring up a random at bat to me and, and I can just tell them like what happened, like what the count was, what the guy was trying to do to me, you know, what the day was like, you know, <laughs> everything. It's amazing. Well, it's tell us about a grand out. slam that you hit with yeah. the San Diego Padres. Can you do that? Sure, sure, sure. Yeah, that was, uh, I think it was uh, on a Friday night. <laughs> yes, it was. Uh, I concur. Night. Yes, yes. Uh, we were down 4-2 to two in the ninth inning. Yeah. Uh, Kilby Olveris had an amazing at bat. That at bat before it, he loaded the bases. He took a really close pitch on 2-2 on, on two -two and 3-2 that were almost strikes uh, to walk. Uh, and I remember him walking, and I remember Merv Retman running out on deck because I wasn't swinging so good at the end of camp, and it was the first week, and I was struggling all that first week. And he grabbed me. He was like, look, 
get your foot down early. That's all I want you to do. Get your foot down early. I'm like, okay, Merv, I gotta get to the plate. <laughs> okay, so I got up there. I said, okay, I'll take the first pitch and just do what he said. And so I got my foot down early. He threw it and went boom. I was like, wow, it looked like he rolled the ball to the plate. It looked up there, 98. I was like, wow, that didn't look very hard. So okay, I'll do that again. So I boom, got my foot down early, and here it comes again, 98, and that's boom. And that was it. There it goes. Wow. Oh, one pitch. Grand slam. Yeah. Grand slam. <laughs> and everybody remembers that. Yeah. 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 He, he hit a few on other teams, but uh, but that San Diego Padre grand yep, slam. I remember man. that one. Yes. And then Sam. Yeah. Why does everything you <laughs> touch turn to gold? Okay. Well, a that's. <laughs> I you were going in that direction. <laughs> it's not true at all. It kind of I mean, is. Look, I I quit a job uh, in biotech to do what I do now. Okay. You ha were not there. Uh, the day I picked up the phone and called the company to find out what it takes to uh, declare bankruptcy. That w it w did not start off strong. It really didn't. Wow. But it's like anything. Um, it takes a lot of work. Wow. You know, there are no overnight success stories. People look and go, oh, he just started and then now he's, you know, three and a half million subscribers on YouTube and restaurants and stuff like that. I've been doing this for 20 years. Mm -hmm. And there was a lot of time when it didn't it didn't work and it didn't go well and and rejection and and I don't like rejection at all I just shy away from it I went to one audition the only audition I ever went to in my life my agent called and said there's this TV show in New York they're casting they need a host and they love you and can you go and it, it's tomorrow and I went and it was so bad I was so cocky before I went into the audition there was some guy in the room he was going to go into and I looked at him I thought I'm just going to kill this guy. awesome <laughs> they're going to hire me in two seconds <laughs> Great. And I go, I go in, and the second I go in, it's like my heart is like I can see it going through my beating through my shirt, and I'm, I'm reading these lines. It's so bad. And I get sudden dry mouth, and they offer me oh, a glass of awesome. water, and I drink it, and I downed it. And she goes, "Do you need more?" And I thought, "Oh no, this <laughs> looks really bad. No, I won't." I didn't get it. I walked back to my hotel in the rain, like a half an hour. It was I was punishing myself. There are moments you don't see that stuff. You yeah. know, yeah. it's like the opposite of contractors. You never hear good <laughs> things about contractors. Yeah. You only hear the bad things. When it's people like these guys sitting here, you hear about their successes, mm -hmm. but you don't hear about the struggles of the pitches that he missed or when he didn't get. Well, Philly never or... struggled. So let's <laughs> yeah. look, my life was built around failure. Yeah, I hit, I hit 270. So I was, I was a failure 75% uh, of the time. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. <laughs> hitting. So <laughs> Sam, but if you yeah. if you fast forward to today, yeah, there's you can't. There's a cooking channel every three on the dial. Of course. And it's obnoxious as hell. <laughs> I hate them all. Hence my question. I was yeah. going to ask you about that. Is it a good thing? Is it a bad thing? Or they... No, I think it's a good thing. I think, like, uh, you know, the restaurant business, more restaurants in an area bring more people. Yeah. It just brings more eyeballs to it. And, and I already said it. You might like my style. You might not like my style. I'm very conversational, but I also give more information. The, that KUSI cooking segment I saw, the guy was using creme fraiche, this chef. Mm -hmm. And he didn't explain what it was. He should have looked at the audience and said, it's basically fancy sour cream. You can make this like that. So I give that kind of information. And there's plenty that are just like, you just see their hands cooking. That's not for me. I want a little personality. I want a little interaction with the host. I'm You're a regular host. dude. I'm a regular dude, yeah. So if you don't like me, watch somebody else. If you like me, great. You're a regular dude fine. that I talks like that. a sailor. I, I talk like a <laughs> sailor. No, wait a second. People come up to me with their little kids in the store and they go, we love watching you all the time. And I go, too much swearing? And we bleep most of the F words sometimes. And they go, ah, nothing they haven't heard. That's do, right. you, do you, are you when you're restaurants, do you roll yeah. in there and give a cooking show to, to the to the I, no, I mean look I'm too I uh, they are um, most of my recipes we have a director of culinary and we work together and stuff like that but I'm too old to jump on the line and make yeah. tacos and it's uh, I don't really want to do that but I am there as often as I can yeah um, and it's fun and I like it and people come it's, I love what I do I'm okay so speaking of food and entertainment what's what, anything coming up Ernie got anything to talk about has something pretty cool coming up All right. by the way I did see him on the line with some tacos. We earlier, were there earlier this year. And, we, we, and, and, was, and, and by the way, it was the best taco. Yeah, it was. It was the best taco. Yeah. Um, and, it and it should have got won. robbed. But um, maybe we'll have a chance to see that taco in the near future. We're going to be doing. Uh, we'll be unveiling it, kind of unveiling it here, because you'll hear it here first. Uh, 
September 9th and 10th this year, we're going to unveil the Del Mar Wine and Food Festival, which is going to be out at the polo fields that we're very excited about announcing. And it rolls off the tongue, but it, it doesn't exist yet. It like doesn't it exist. Out. It's unlimited capacity to really build it out the way we want to um, yeah. and really activate North County. North County really needs an event of its own. There'll be music around it. It'll be a little bit more music-centric than some of the other wine and food festivals, but you know, over 150 wineries, um, all sorts of amazing restaurants. You need Sam the cooking guy. Yeah, for sure. Well, we talked about it. <laughs> I, I, think, I, think, I, think I think there's, uh, there's, I think there's some good things that can happen yeah. there, and um, you know, it's just about getting everybody together. I, I like the model a little bit better, as I, we've talked about Wonderfront and some different things, where 60% of all the monies are going to the artists. You can really now invest into a culinary event. And then probably another 15 to 20 events that lead up to it, whether it be the opening night at Monarch or events at Rare Society or at Pampa Moose, where you can have curated really good wines with food paired up in a way that you just don't typically get in North yeah, County. Fantastic. And then bring in celebrity chefs like this one or others that are around. He means real celebrity chefs. No, no. But are, this okay, is, I think he was the epitome is the of the He is the original chef. celebrity yes. chef. The way I look at it is I remember watching his show sitting there. And I, I, I look at him, I just get hungry thinking about it because all the shows that he's doing and all the good foods, and he was talking to you in a certain way that just you hadn't seen before. Like, an ordinary guy, I'm like, I could do that. I can't quite do it that way, but I could make an attempt at doing it like You that. can. Yeah. You just have to do it. That's the thing. It's awesome. Yeah, yeah. And I do. I get hungry thinking about it. I want to know at some point during the show, what is the most difficult thing you've had to make on TV? Me? Yeah. Because it, there, there has to be something that you were thinking, maybe I shouldn't have gone for the creme brulee or whatever it was. No, Everything's easy. I, no, it's it's no. not. Uh, it's, I don't, I've never really, I don't do complicated stuff. No. So I don't have to worry about that. I have made some crappy things, though. Okay, great. We're here from Sam. The crappiest thing you ever made on TV. Right. All right. On the air, it's on the air. Great to have you on today. That's right. Good to have you. I do have a question. Right. Steve Finley. Born, well, raised in Paducah, Kentucky. Yes. How was that? What? And I'm, I'm assuming when you were in high school, you had to have been like a standout athlete. You were probably what? Quarterback? Now, you know, my dad played college football at the University of Tennessee, Martin. Uh, he was the quarterback. He was also he was the running back. He was also the safety. That was back when they went both sides. I yeah. said his helmet was like the one little thing across. Yeah. They called him hog jaws because he got his, his jaw broken so many times while he was playing. Anyway, he wanted me to play football. He really wanted me to play football. He had me trying quarterback and everything. And after my first practices in freshman year, getting banged around all the big guys, doing the, going through the ropes, and I was like, I really don't like football. He was like, but I was like, I really love baseball. So he said, well, you better focus on that then. And then, so I did that, played basketball. And I, I never thought of myself as a good athlete. I just loved playing. And I thought everybody else was better than me. So it made me work harder to try to get better than them. Do you remember your first at bat in the major leagues? Absolutely, yeah. It Where was, was it? Uh, 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 April 3rd in 1989. <laughs> wow. Pretty sure. Yeah, facing Roger Clemens. Wow. Wow, your first at bat. What? That's what happened? Cool. Yep, yep, and uh, uh, I got to, I was batting third in the order, uh, and uh, I think it was the two and two count, hung a slider, and I flew out to right field, and that was and that was that. And then uh, two innings later, I slammed into the wall, making a catch, separated my shoulder, and I was done for three weeks. So oh. I didn't get my second at bat until uh, like towards the end of April. Steve, is get, is getting into the majors was it was it different back then versus now? Because obviously you see a different trajectory. Obviously the travel ball. Parents are spending a 12-year span trying to get their people into Major League Baseball. Was it different when you were a kid? I, I played uh, a few months of baseball, like two months of baseball when I was a kid. And yeah. then I played, you know, when I was a kid, I played all the sports. I played basketball, and, and I think that was part of what made me a good baseball player. Yeah. Uh, you don't need to play baseball only from eight years old all the way through. You should experience every sport because... Not every person is going to be a professional baseball player, but maybe if they'd have played golf, they could have been a professional golfer or just gone to college with it. I mean, I, I never thought about myself being a professional baseball player. 
all I did was love baseball. And then when I got to high school, I was like, maybe I can get a college scholarship, which I did. And then, and then my college coach said, you know, I think you might have a chance to play pro. I was like, really? Cool. You know, and, and I got drafted my junior year and went back to school, didn't give me enough money and got my degree and I got drafted my senior year and started my career in minor leagues. Did you not have uh, the goal of becoming a pro in your head? Mm. Really? Never. Just really? I never, I, my first baseball Amazing. game I ever went to was I was a senior and I got invited to go to the seventh game of the World Series between the Cardinals and the Brewers. Yeah. My buddy, family had an extra ticket. My dad let me go, you know, but I never watched baseball. I mean, what? when I was a kid, you can't, you see baseball now, you think baseball is 24 seven. There's right. MLB network. Every game's televised from every team. Back when I was a kid, it was Monday night baseball and Saturday afternoon. Well, I'm right. sorry. I wasn't staying home on a Saturday afternoon. I was out playing somewhere, doing something. <laughs> and there was one radio station. Yeah. I, there yeah. was one point of, uh, point of service yeah. on that. We had Cincinnati, you know three and a half four hours away and we had the cardinals the same thing you know and so and then so i didn't start watching baseball until my freshman year in college i broke my leg playing summer league in virginia so i had to sit on the couch all summer and so that's when i realized that the cubs that we've just gotten cable mm -hmm. so the cubs were on during the day they played only day games and then you had the atlanta braves on tbs at night so that's oh. the first time i ever started watching baseball another question this is more of a scenario Okay, let's say you're in the dugout, mm -hmm. and on the pitcher's mound, there's a brawl. Everybody clears the dugout and stuff. Why does everyone go out and fight? I mean, do you ever, I mean, <laughs> it's actually you ever, a great do you question. Ever, do you ever question. say, you know what, I'm going to sit this one out? Or do well, you, and when you're running out there, you know, to the pitcher's mound, when everyone's on top of each other, do you try to pick someone out? <laughs> Wow. The general answer is depends. <laughs> um, it depends on who you're fighting and why. Yeah. Like, uh, I'll give you an example. My first, my first year in the National League with the Houston Astros, we're, we played Cincinnati, I guess, every year. And they told me when we were heading there, like, look, we're going to fight this series. I was like, we are? Why? <laughs> we fight these guys every year because they, we hate them and they hate us. <laughs> I'm like, well, why? He goes, well, their pitchers throw at our heads all the time. They had the nasty boys, right. Rob Dibble, right. Charlton, That's and, right. and, and, they, and sure enough, I'm telling you, it wasn't, I think it was the second or first or second game. It wasn't opening day. It was the second game. And throws the ball up at our leadoff hitter, and he, here he goes, and here we're out there. And, I mean, it, it gets nasty in there. I mean, I, well, I, what did you do? Did you go after someone? Who'd you go after? Well, one of them. Yeah, I was one, actually, well, one of them, I ended up on the bottom somehow, and I'm trying to get up, and all of a sudden, they sign, he's got me around the neck, pulling up this way, and I see two shin guards right there, right there, and right there, and I was starting to start go black, and I said, well, I know the one way out of this. I went straight up. Yeah. You know, and I got released. You I know, didn't know you guys I, were actually hitting. Yeah, and, and I mean, we our, had our first base coach found Rob Dibble and had him in an arm lock and gum hanging out of his mouth. I have a picture of that somewhere. Like, his face was turning blue. Awesome. You know, I was like, there was some serious bad blood. And then half the time, it's just one guy mad at the pitcher because he got thrown yeah. at. We're like, why is he going out there? We have to go out there. So now we're just like, we're out there talking to the other guys on the other team. Yeah, okay, let's just get these guys out of here. Let's all, hey, what's going on? You know, what are you doing tonight? What are you doing tomorrow? That type of thing, you know? That's cool. Ernie, how old were you when you first went to a Padre game? Uh, four. Yeah, and then following, you know, it used to take me down and yeah. get the autographs and Dave Winfield playing and, and just... Uh, and the Slurpee Cups, right? Yeah, back there and just, uh, you know, running the bases back then as a kid, yeah. you know, at, at uh, Jack Murphy Stadium. And I was talking to Steve earlier about this. You know, I've been involved with thousands of events now, and um, but no event better than in 84. I was there for game four right. uh, when the home run was hit off of Lee Smith and Steve Garvey. And, and we talked about that because... Strangers were hugging and kissing each other and high-fiving and that stadium got really really loud But it was actually moving that night. There were so many people jumping up and down You could feel it shifting around. It was a special night. It brought all of San Diego together. It was just yep. uh, and That's what sports teams. That's why there's so much sadness and Bitterness behind the Chargers and all that kind of stuff because these teams really do matter They're part of the fabric of a community and when you, what we get behind when you're in Mission Valley and you're on the 8 and you drive over and you yeah. look over west and and you don't see that stadium, what, what do you feel? It, uh, it hurts, actually. You know, I, I, I don't know if you remember, we unveiled, like, a Project X back then in 2005 as one of the solutions met with the Chargers, too. And my version always was, because I was running for 25 years, the old sports arena, yeah. and we were still competitive in everything we did, and I was kicking, I'm going to use, I kicking somebody else's ass over at San Diego State and the amphitheater, and I had the old venue, and it was relationships and, and how we work. You know, there was a model there where you could have put in a couple hundred million dollars into that existing stadium, like they did at Arrowhead, and 
brought in the big screens and done that and made it great. Now, Petco is awesome that we have, but um, I'm sad there because now there's, you know, now you're talking about six or seven billion dollars to try to get a team back to town, which gets a little more daunting. And uh, I think there were solutions there. But in the end, Petco's, I think, just voted number one park again in yeah. USA right. today. So it's. And, and I think we'll get another NFL team. I hope so. But it's going to be a while. On the air, it's on the air. Great to have you on today. Musical instrument? Yes. <laughs> what do you play? This should be good. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I remember sitting in the band when I was playing. I'll tell you the instrument in a second. Um, <laughs> and we were putting this performance on for the school. And then one of these kids in the band gets up there and he plays Dust in the Wind. And I'm just seeing all the girls back there just going, oh my God. I'm like, I picked the wrong instrument. <laughs> trumpet. I played the trumpet. <laughs> yeah, nothing right says. Here. Yeah. Trumpet. Nothing says yeah. romance like trumpet. I know. <laughs> Chuck, Man, Steve? Chuck Mangione was as close as you could get to... Nobody to wants to hear trumpet no. at a party. <laughs> hey, can I get my trumpet for you? I'm sorry. Ladies I and gentlemen, Steve that. Dillard. <laughs> Not the Righteous Brothers, with that. Leonard Skinner, and the Sully Band. It, it's... Wait, can you still play? Uh, no, when I is mean, the last time you... The trumpet is not the thing you can just jump up and yeah. start playing because you got to get your lips. Well, Steve, you're, you're jumping up right now. Ready for it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you're jumping up right not, now. Get on. Oh, it would job. be ugly. <laughs> yeah, it'd be ugly. Oh, yeah. And you played trumpet too? Yeah, for all well, my high school years. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Mr. Um, Mr. Cooper was the band leader. It was great. So, Sam, talk to us about the restaurant business yeah. in San Diego it's right now. Worst business ever. Don't go into it. I mean, you're post COVID, you survived. Wait, where's the COVID? camera? I'm telling you right now, wherever the camera is, don't <laughs> do it. It's, it's the most going out of business business that they make. I put up, yeah, I, I say I say the same thing about the festival business. Right? Yeah. So buy a ticket to a festival, buy a ticket to a restaurant and have a nice dinner. Yeah, buddy. exactly. Look, I say I have the best restaurant job out there because uh, I don't, I, I'm not on the line. I'm not, I don't open the door in the morning. I don't, uh, I, Buy tomatoes, have to run out and buy tomatoes if right. we're out. If Susie calls in sick for her shift, I don't jump on the line and do that. I have partners that take care of that stuff. Yeah. They do that part. I'm The food, the inspiration, the recipes, the branding, the image, the n stupidity, the nonsense, all that kind of stuff. But it's a partner relationship and a good one that works. Yeah. You know, I have success. Then in the there was COVID. Business. Then there was COVID, right? yeah. We opened up Gray's two months before COVID hit. And then, and then, Oh, what the hell? Let's close our restaurant for you know four months or something. Right. You don't want to do that, but it's doing great. We're you know it's perseverance. It's great people. We're very fortunate. We try and hire as best as we can, and and those are the that's the face of the well, restaurant and the entertainment business as well. I mean, let's face it. You know, the, the face of entertainment, especially in your category, has changed dramatically since yeah. COVID, and it's a, it's a kind of a big deal. It is, and we had, you know, we had a couple of years off. You know, you, you spent all this time in branding and energizing for, you know, Wonderfront in 2019, and yeah. then all of a sudden you're off for two years, which means it doesn't happen for three years, right. and you got to rebrand and do that. And, yeah, it's just, uh, it's so much work. So as soon as he said that, it's like, oh, man, he took my line. I always say, like, buy a ticket to the festival. Don't produce a festival. <laughs> um, and buy a VIP ticket. Um, and we talk about it all, all the time. It's just, it's hard. And, and one of the reasons why I mentioned... Um, the Wine and Food Festival earlier. It's just, it's, you can go into that high energy experience overall and great food, um, and all the money isn't going somewhere. Right. So, you know, I can't relate that to the restaurant business, but in our business, like, the artists are getting all the money now. And when you play on a festival, you're getting to hear them for maybe 70, 75 minutes versus if they're on an arena tour, they're doing two and a half hours, but I get the privilege of paying them time and a half for coming to a special event because that then also takes them out of this market if they were going to tour that becomes a, you know so it's almost like a corporate gig but what makes you three so different why are you three so successful i mean i know i i go ahead i can tell you i just listened to these guys out there i was exhausted <laughs> literally i was exhausted if you want to do what they do and be good at it 
I mean, in the five or ten minutes we were out there talking, they went through two years of things they're going to do together yeah. and, and have them planned out to the detail. I mean, it was amazing listening to them talk. And I told them, like, I'm sitting here exhausted. Like, how do you do that? But that's what it takes. That's what it takes. It takes that extra thing. If people think everything is, just, oh, I can do this easily. Well, yeah. you can't. You can't do it easy. You can't be a baseball player easy. It takes years and years of practice and seeing that curveball out of the pitcher's hand. For these guys doing what they do and knowing how to maneuver all the obstacles they know they're going to run you into, know what a big, it's amazing. I think a big part of it uh, is actually doing. You know, people will come up and they'll say, uh, I can't cook. We, we, I'd love to watch you, but I can't cook. And I go, I bet it's not that you can't. I bet it's that you don't. Yeah. They've had some, they've made something that didn't work out and they go, oh, obviously I don't have the cooking gene. But I didn't have the cooking gene when I started. I mean, my wife said that day, you can't cook. <laughs> the only thing I did was I barbecued, which meant taking food outside, burning the shit out of it and bringing it in. And I don't think we knew better, we ate it. Now I can. Uh, you go to make a pineapple upside down cake, you burn it or it's too sweet. The second time you go to make it, you go, okay, too much sugar, I'll cut back. Too much time in the oven. Second time, it's going to be a lot better. might not be perfect. It's the 10,000 hours concept. You do something for 10,000 hours, you're going to be good at it. I mean, look, I couldn't play baseball for 10,000 hours and become a professional. You have to have a certain amount of re inside you to pull that off. <laughs> but the example I give is uh, people say, I can't go. I go, look, can you ride a bike? And they go, of course. I go, I can guarantee you there's a time in your life when you couldn't. Somebody had to hold the back of it or run along beside you. Now you can because of practice. You want to get better at something, excel at it, do it more. Are they ever going to send us inside? I don't want to eat inside anymore. Remember, you know, like down in the Little Italy where we get to sit outside but because, of the, yeah. because of COVID. I mean, I'm, I want to keep it that way forever. I, well, if, what, what is your prognostication on that one? Uh, yeah, I, I'm a, I agree. We, this is the kind of city that we can pull that off with. Yeah. yeah. You know, a lot of it, they're still out there. The city's been very cool about allowing the restaurants to keep those parklets where they are. Yeah. They've made them pull the roofs off, which was kind of sad uh, because they, people spend a lot of money making them really beautiful. But it's an outdoor city. We have the best median weather in the country. We mm -hmm. beat Florida. We beat Hawaii. We should be outside as often as we can. And I'm with you. I want to be out there. I really do. Well, as a continental flair to the sure. eighth largest city in the United States. It, it, I mean, clearly, it's a different experience now before COVID. And I'm, I got to tell you, it's better than it was. The Piazza in Little Italy that you have not gone to forever feels like you're in Europe. It really does. All right. Sam, the cooking guy for president. There you go. Keep feeling it. On the air, it's on the air, everybody. Oh, yeah. Tom. Tom. And, I was, and I was focusing on the this, trumpet at once. I know. Yeah. Was this is the one. This is the song you have to sing. That song? In the Stone. Oh, come on. Not today. <laughs> hey, um, but I was watching. Oh, look at, look at how fast he pivots. I was watching the Sully Band play right now, but I was also watching the audience. It's so cool that James' family is here. Your sister was rocking out. CC. <laughs> CC's the one. She basically founded us at Camp Land on the Bay. Oh, yeah. We were playing at Camp Land on the Bay. Uh, it was a horrible show. And she somehow put us all together. So with CC East right there, give her a big hand. Yeah. Um, Mary, does Mary have a mic? Do you have a mic? Yeah. I do. Are you still gathering audience members for On the Yes. Air? Every right. week, email me at audience at loft100studios.com. We've got lots of seats to fill in the upcoming week, so email me and we'll get you. And every once in a while, we have a taco truck. Or uh, maybe Sam the Cookie Guy shows up. We feed him, we entertain him, and uh, 
Uh, we can teach them new vocabulary, like today when Sam's on. <laughs> so, fantastic. Hey, Steve, can you tell us one more baseball story? Just like an at-bat or something. You know, this was not really funny, but it was kind of cool. I remember this instant, um, and this just popped into my head as soon as you said that. We were playing in Cincinnati, and, and Luis Gonzalez is going back for a fly ball, and, and, the, and the mid-deck kind of hangs over the field a little bit. Right. He goes back, he's right at the wall, and I'm running, you got room, you got room. He, he's getting ready to catch it, and all of a sudden a full beer, <laughs> right down on top of him. <laughs> like that, and he caught the ball. He's walking away, and he's turning around looking, and everybody's like giving him, ah, giving him hell. Yeah. And, and I run over there, and dude, you're all, whew, you smell. <laughs> and the umpire runs out there, and he's like, who threw it, who threw it? And we're all looking up there, and everybody's just giving him hell. And I, and I was like, I don't know. I don't know. I didn't I, see it. I just saw the beer come down. And uh, the umpire was like, ah, there's not a lot I can do. You caught the ball good. I was like, hold on. I go, that guy right there, he's the one that threw it. And that guy's like, I didn't do it. He did it. He did it. <laughs> <laughs> Ratted him out like that. <laughs> can you, can you hear? I always wanted to ask this. Can you hear the San Diego fans when, they're, when you're down there on the, on the field? It depends. You know, if it's a packed house, not yeah. really. But, I mean, like in Wrigley Field, which is one of my favorite fields to play in, I mean, it's just beautiful. The fans, I mean, from here to sitting on where the lights are yeah. right up here, not very far at all. And, and you can have conversations with them then. And they've had some of the best rags and you know you turn around and say hey, that's a good one you know and yeah. uh, it was it was a it was a it was a relationship that you knew certain places that if you acknowledge that you even yeah. heard them it was going to get 10 times worse uh, in yeah. some places you could acknowledge them and it was kind of it came a fun banter so uh, it was, were you ever nervous out there with the fans I mean like a New York crowd or something when I played winter ball in Arecibo in Puerto Rico I was a little worried when there was batteries and everything else throwing at you out there yeah. but uh, in the big leagues I mean you have every now and then you'd see a quarter laying here or a nickel laying over here but nothing ever you know the only time maybe I was scared to go back to the wall was in New York and they had they had given a battle of wooden bat giveaway they were banging on the wall come on back here do you guys go. remember I like, bat maybe night maybe I won't go for a home run here tonight what could go wrong do you remember bat night like what could go we're going to get bats out to the kids that's a great idea let's get a deadly weapon I think they still have them actually in the gift shop let's go with knife night next yes, yes that's right <laughs> How could that be bad? Hey, hey, Steve, when a when a Major League Baseball player hits like a milestone home run, you know, and it goes out there and it's like their 500th home run or whatever, and there's someone that catches it, who should get that ball? I mean, I mean look, when I hit my first home run, that was my milestone, you know, and they went out there, they found the guy, and, and then it's a negotiation. What do they want? You know, I gave them a bat and a ball, and that's all they really wanted. Is it mine, truly a negotiation? Could, I, th I think I think it, uh, that association has evolved over time. I think when I played, if that ball would have been caught, you'd right. gone down, got to meet the guy, bat and ball glove, they'd have been happy. There wasn't like this auction now that you yeah. could go and make uh, uh, millions forever money yeah. for some people. I mean, like an amazing amount of money. Yeah. So I don't blame them. Hey, if somebody's willing to pay that for that ball, I just caught a gold mine. Yeah. I, I'm going to hang on to it, you know, and get security to get me out of here. <laughs> so, Ernie, let's talk about September. This is coming up. I want to start promoting this right now. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm not supposed to say too much about it, but I'm gonna, but, I'm gonna, but, but I, I will. But, but yeah. I will. Uh, yeah. So I mean, uh, major announcements coming, but that September 9th and 10th weekend is the key weekend. We'll have the grand tasting on the 9th and the 10th for probably about 4,000 people a day. Wow. And um, on the polo fields. On the polo fields, and then we'll have a bunch of different events that will be on our website that you'll see that will. So you know, you could opt in for the opening night party. Right. I want to do this tasting on this restaurant on that night. I'm going to buy a grand tasting on the Saturday and the Sunday, an event at the belly up, whatever that may be, package it up and now you can kind of plan your whole week. And it's all geared around, you know, North County. And, and I'm assuming Wonder Bus will be there. Both Wonder Buses will be there. Come on. And um, I, real quick, I just thought about something when he was talking about the bats. It was when we owned and operated the hockey team for 11 years and I got to throw in, we won five championships in eight years when we owned the goals of the West Coast Hockey League. We had a guy named Bruce Shoebottom. And one night, um, this was, had been before that, where he played for the opposing team, uh, we had fanny pack night. And the, somebody, <laughs> Another bad idea. somebody doused, doused a beer on him behind. <laughs> and next thing you know, all hell breaks out. He gets into the stands in his skates. And he's throwing punches. They're punching him. And he has about 100 fanny packs being thrown at him at the same time. <laughs> he gets tossed. Players get tossed in the end. We had about 3,000 fanny packs on the ice that night. Squeegeed them up, took them back, dried them off. And nobody ever took them home. We had a second fanny pack night with those fanny packs later in the year. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. 
So thanks, Bruce. Fanny pack night. Sam, what's uh, what's coming up for you for here I for 2023? Know. I'm buddy. tired. I just want to go home and sleep. Actually, <laughs> no, I just finished my sixth book. Okay. Uh, it's a grilling book. It will come out next year. Literally sent uh, the manuscript and all the photography uh, this week, a couple days ago, and now it takes a year plus to turn it into a book. Never can get enough of you, man. Sam the Cookie Guy, thank you so much for coming in. Steve, you too. Ernie, you're, he's closing in on robe status. Yeah. It's coming. What's on the, the air, it's on the air. What's the newest restaurant? Cuckoo's Nest. Cuckoo's Nest. Yes. Here we go, we'll see you next week.